things came to be. You drive down a street and you wonder, what's the real history here? News Channel 8's Rod Carter does that all the time, and he joins us now with what's in a name. Rod? Yeah, I'm either naturally curious or just plain old nosy. Either way, I wanted to know a lot more about where we live. For example, who is Dale Mabry, and what did he do so special that he had to have a whole street named after him? After him? And wait until you hear about the name Tampa and how that came to be. We love the beauty of Tampa Bay, from the sunny skies to every clap of thunder and magnificent flash of lightning. Tampa is stunning. It's rich in history. We love to brag about it to the world. But what the world and even some natives may not know, Tampa really isn't Tampa at all. And as you think about trying to say Tampa with an N is really difficult. It turns out the true original name of Tampa was really Tampa with an N. Rodney Kite Powell with the Tampa Bay History Center tells me Tampa is from Native Americans, but settlers changed it. The place, uh, Tampa, that name goes back uh, to the pre-Columbian times. Tampa translated means sticks of fire, so named because of the impressive amounts of lightning we experience. So exactly where was Tampa or Tampa or however you say it? Well, it probably isn't where we are today. But the real thing is it may not have even been here. It may actually have been in Charlotte Harbor. Uh, there was a shipwreck survivor, survivor, a guy named Fontaneda. He documented all the native villages up the West Coast, and one of them was Tampa. Uh, we think it was here, probably where, um, where uh, Safety Harbor is. Tampa also had another name. And they called this area the Bay of the Holy Spirit. The city as it sits now was born out of an old military post, Fort Brook. The Fort Brook parking garage sits on what was the center of the base. It stretched along the Garrison Channel, where the History Center is now, behind Amelie Arena. It was decommissioned in 1883 and became an incorporated town in 1885. It was a place for, well, let's just say, frivolity. Tampa was a place that people came to misbehave, and if you, if, if Tampa was too um, restricted for you, then you went to Fort Brook. So Fort Brook was for for the people who um, uh, wanted the least amount of kind of law enforcement and supervision. And if Fort Brook and Tampa were the playground for the common folks, then Temple Terrace, just a few miles to the north, was the field of dreams for the rich. More upper crust uh, type people. In 1911, the sprawling 6,000 acre area was a winter hunting preserve for the wealthy Potter Palmer family from Chicago. In 1918, the Palmers sold that land to developers who then turned it into residential areas, a golf course, and 5,000 acres of orange groves, which led to popularizing the then new and exotic hybrid Temple Orange, the groves, the largest in the world in 1922. It's all about fusing Florida's love affair with citrus with, you know, um, well-to-do pursuits like golf. So there's the Golf and Country Club, um, and it's really, you know, meant to be a kind of, um, you know, a community of, of well-financed individuals. That country club, well, the building still exists. It's now Florida College. And another person heavily involved in the foundation of Temple Terrace is Maude Fowler. One of the Tampa's main thoroughfares, Fowler Avenue, is named after her. And they'd always ask it in a really angry way, upset with this poor guy. The guy we're talking about is Dale Mabry. His name is on one of our busiest highways. He's actually born in Tallahassee, but grew up here in Tampa. Mabry was a World War I vet who paid the ultimate sacrifice, but not in war. He died in this, the Roma. And after the war, he was in Washington, D.C., and he was actually at the controls of a, uh, what we call the blimp, or a dirigible, an Italian uh, design, design, Italian build. And there was a malfunction while he was flying it, and uh, he actually was able to steer it away from a populated area, and it crashed in a field, and he lost his life as well as other servicemen on board. And when MacDill Air Force Base was built, then Vera Avenue was reinforced and renamed after that World War I aviator. Being one of the kind of early fatalities in, you know, as a, as a test pilot, um, he was... He was honored. The Howard Franklin Bridge is another road that people love to complain about. Some even call it the Howard Frankenstein because of all the traffic. Well, Howard Franklin was someone who paved the way for transportation in our area. Pretty prominent citizen. He owned uh, the Pioneer Tire Company um, and kind of service stations in the area. He also served on the road board for the state. And helped bridge St. Pete and Tampa, a city with a lot in a name 
that really wasn't. So we mentioned Maud Fowler and her contribution to Temple Terrace, where her son Cody Fowler actually made a huge impact in Tampa as well. According to the city of Tampa, he drafted the city's first charter and served as its first attorney and also served as a mayor. It was actually the only office, elected office, he ever held. That was in 1928. Of course, you could read a lot more about Tampa's history, Temple Terrace history, by going to the Tampa History Museum. You I'll know so much more when I drive down those streets now. Uh, it's yeah. very interesting. And just, it's the Howard Franklin with a D. Franklin, That's the yeah. Yeah. Yes. I feel like Franklin. there ought to be a test afterwards. Maybe on <laughs> WFLA.com. Fill in the blanks. Come by my I mean, desk. I got a whole test. So right. Good thing you learn. should bring that up because Thank in you. two minutes, Rob.